All right, recently I was exploring the web and I came across this new AI search engine that's claimed to be built for developers. So I started exploring it and you would notice that it's a lot like what you'd find in ChatGPT. You can start multiple threads and find lets you ask pretty much anything, although again, it's meant for developers, but it gives you three different modes, an expert mode, a concise mode, and a creative mode, which we'll be talking about. But how does this fare up to the likes of ChatGPT? Can it actually answer questions well enough and Perhaps the best thing about this is how they actually treat your privacy when using it and collecting your data. Because we know all of these AIs are learning on top of the data that we are providing and it's being placed in the data model, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. Let's start with something simple. Since I'm fairly familiar with C++, I'm going to find to the expert level of creating a hello world program. So we'll just say create a hello world program or using C++. And let's see what happens. As soon as you hit enter, you'll notice that an answer starts to get generated. Now, the answer itself is a little slower. So if I was going to compare this to ChatGPT, I'd say it's on the level of ChatGPT4 as far as it goes with the speed of the output over here. Now, if you need something faster, ChatGPT 3.5 is blazingly fast especially whenever you pay for the plus. If you want to check out if ChatGPT plus access is worth it for the ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 models, check this video out. I'll post a link in the description below as well. Many people are finding that helpful, but let's keep moving on to this amazing fine tool that I found. So to create a Hello World program, it says you can use the example below, and then it gives you an explanation below. So what's nice about this is it does look correct, so it doesn't include IO stream, so it puts in the IO stream library. It creates a main function, returns an integer of zero at the end, and it calls out C out from the standard library. Perfect, this should be able to run no problem. And just to test things, I'll run it on an online compiler, and it says, hello world, the program finished and exited with the code zero. Fantastic, it works very well. So now let's see what kind of explanation it has and why this, in my opinion, is even better than ChatGPT. Well, the first thing you'll notice here is some URLs, which is fantastic. It's actually giving you the sources of where the output is coming from. It's taking it from programis.com. So it's properly attributing its sources, which is not something that ChatGPT does today. So let's read about this. It says, include IO stream. This is a preprocessor directive that includes the IO stream library, which allows you to use STDC out for outputting text to the console. Fantastic. And main is an entry point for the program. Every C++ program must have a main function. Very true. And then it says the standard C out. Hello world. This line uses standard C out to print the content inside of the quotation marks. What it doesn't tell you is that this is actually a string. So that's something that could use improvement. Anything between quotes to the console. Fantastic. Return zero, this line indicates the exit status of the program. In simple terms, the program ends with a statement. So think of this new find PHIND data model or AI, if that's what you want to call it, as a great way to gather data for you and present it, especially when you have to go across many different articles or solutions. Let's say if you're using Stack Overflow, they're all concisely pulled together and put on one page. That's what makes find so powerful. Much like ChatGPT, it just scours everything and finds what's the most relatable output and puts everything on one screen. Now, what's even more fantastic, if you haven't already noticed, it has even more sources on the right-hand corner because it's pulling from many, many places. So it does give you access directly to those sources. Let's say you want to learn more specific things. You can actually dive into one of these sources and look, as well as you can attribute the sources and where things came from as you use find. So not so bad, but let's keep going down here. An alternative version to the same program using namespace std directive, it gives you an alternative. So the difference here is since it's using this namespace std, you don't have to explicitly call it out for C out. Notice how there's no std colon colon in front of that, which is just an easier way to be able to call functions out of the standard library without actually specifying it's from the standard library. Anyways, great. It gave us a second solution, which I like because it went really far into depth. I know this is a very simple solution. We'll get into one that's a little harder to do here in a moment and grade it a little bit. Since I've done the project in the past, 
And finally, it gives you the instruction on how to actually build and compile the code and run it. Fantastic. And it says even what you should expect. Now, the one thing I don't see here is how to actually install GCC or G++, the GNU compiler tools. I don't see that anywhere. It does mention GCC, but really doesn't explain what it is from what I can tell. Not a big deal. I don't think ChatGPT would do that either. So it basically doesn't let you know anything about the G++ or GCC compiler tools. No big deal. But what's really nice is it actually goes through and gives you a few extra follow-up questions. So you can either ask a follow-up question on the code from above or use one of the predefined follow-up questions. I believe these actually come from other users. And while I'm talking about other users, I want to specifically let you know the privacy policy here because that is important and then we'll come back to an example. But before we do, smash that like button for me and only about 5% of you are subscribed currently with over 200,000 of you watching a month. Make sure to take a moment and subscribe below so you can get wonderful content like this. We'll come back to this example in a moment, but let's actually go down to their privacy and figure out how Find handles our privacy. So something very important and transparent by them is that they do not sell your data, period, they claim. So what do they collect? They do collect, to improve their services, anonymous information from your search queries and the associated results. So that's why I think those follow-up questions could be coming from other people's queries on the same thing and maybe some follow-up questions that they had, which isn't all bad because they got to train their data model one way or another. We know that all the data models and AIs are currently doing this. So it'd actually be a very big surprise if Find wasn't doing this and would impede them against that competitive way of keeping your data model fresh. We do not associate your searches with any personally identifiable information, such as your IP address. So they don't keep any personally identifiable information. This is fantastic. And then finally, it says the searches that we anonymously log may be used to improve our product and machine learning models. We never sell your data to a third party. Now, this is the important part, I think. They don't sell the data to any other parties, so they're not looking to make money off of your data. This here is a fantastic thing, at least in my mind. This is not to say that in the future they couldn't change this privacy policy around. Make sure you always check your privacy policies as you are using tools on the internet so that you understand where your data is going and what you are using, what you are signing up for. I understand nothing. But I do want to give a thumbs up for the fact that Find is being very transparent here and currently doesn't seem to be super malicious with our data, like selling it to third parties. I doubt a lot of AIs could say that, but regardless, let's go and try it out in concise mode this time so you can see the differences. All right, if we press enter here, we're gonna give it a few moments to spit things out. It is a little faster with the concise mode, so be aware of that. But overall, it gives you a pretty good step-by-step -step process. As you can tell, there's way more steps, less paragraphs in here, and it still outputs code, which is fantastic. Let me know which one you end up using, and let's finally get creative. So we can do that as well. When it gets creative, it basically condenses things even more. That way it allows you to apply your own kind of thought process on it. Doesn't necessarily spit everything out to you, but again, gives you code. It didn't give me two examples this time. It only gave me the one, which we have to explicitly call out the standard library. But just know that there are three different modes that you can use this fine search engine with. Again, there's follow-up questions you can make at the very bottom and sources on the right. If you're going to use code from the AI, make sure you always quote your sources. Also give it feedback so it can build its model better. That's why there's a thumbs up, a thumbs down, and a way to copy the entire answer here, which is another neat tool that they have. But probably the biggest advantage here is going to be the fact that Find is taught on the latest information available on the web. That means you can get information that's up to date from the data model, and it's constantly building that data model based on what's available on the web. Now, ChatGPT cannot say that because ChatGPT is currently limited to, I believe, 2021 as its cutoff year for the data model. That means anything after 2021 isn't actually built into the model and you can't currently view it. Now, in the future, they do intend to give us access to even scraping the web with ChatGPT, but that is currently not available. So that's one huge advantage to find the search engine. So keep these things in mind and give Find a try. Also, let me know what solutions you end up finding on Find and using the search engine in the comment section below. 
let's finally go in and do a harder program. So this time I actually want to use a front end as well as a back end and I want to keep it in two separate languages. So I'm actually going to use Flutter framework that uses the Dart programming language and C++. And what I want to do is I want to be able to talk between Flutter and C++. I want it to create something called a plugin between the two. So what I'll say is create a front end Flutter program that can communicate to a C++ backend. Let's see what it can come up with. Now this is going to take a little bit because this is not simplistic code, but it is chugging along and surprisingly just reading the first paragraph, it does seem to have a good idea of what I want. It's naming off certain things that make sense. It's going to use the method channel approach, which I'll agree is correct for what I want. It's going to use the foreign function interface from Dart in order to create the bridge code to C++, so that's all good. But one thing that I'll say is this same prompt in ChatGPT would have actually given me a example, whereas this doesn't give me an example quite yet. Instead, it just gives me some information on how I would approach this. So it says, first create a method channel in your Flutter's project. Okay, include the necessary modules, call the init method channel on create. In your dark code, create a method channel object and invoke the method channel, okay some more pros and cons using Dart FFI. Maybe I wasn't clear enough here. I'll say use Flutter as a front end and a method channel with the Dart FFI bridge to communicate to a C++ backend and give me an example program. Let's see if it can do a little better this time. All right, this time it is writing a program, which is fantastic. One thing you'll notice is it doesn't actually label what language it's using. Although this is Dart, that's clear to me, but it might not be clear to some beginner who might be using code. All right, this took a couple minutes, but it finally generated all of this code. This is the Dart portion of the code, and it's just creating a front end that uses a button with a stateful widget that then can call our C++ function. So it will try to get a response back from the call CPP function, and then the call CPP function is right here. It has the X, X turn C, and in here it has a string. So it tries to invoke this function, which then it awaits a response. And once it gets a response, everything's good. We then set a state to the response and then we write out the response here in text on the front end. All right, that looks good. Now this isn't necessarily what I expected, but okay, that's fine. I probably should have specified that this was meant for maybe like a Linux platform instead of Android. I'm not sure if this is exactly right, but, but definitely not what I wanted. I would have liked a native C++ function in Linux. All good. But overall, you can see how effective this is. Find is a wonderful tool that can be used. And there's three major benefits to using this thing. One, it seems to respect privacy to a certain extent. Two, it's free to use. Three, it's up to date. Do you think this is going to be the platform that ends up being used by developers the most? Let me know in the comments section below. They're definitely one of the first to bring together a very nice tool for all of us to use. So I personally will be trying to use this tool and seeing what kind of complications arise. I do think the context of the prompts are being better determined by ChatGPT, but I think if you're very specific here with Find, you will have decent answers with excellent explanations. Now, do I think this can build some kind of large scale program? Absolutely not. As you can tell, it struggles with your context clues. So it's only as good as what you can define. And it's not meant for very large projects. It's meant for small components that you could build into your major projects. Anyways, if you found this video helpful, please smash that like button for me. That'd be great. Also, think about subscribing below. Again, only 5% of you are currently subscribed, but many of you watch. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.